Welcome to today's video, everyone. We are at Yashio Factory with Okachan. He's chilling on his phone, reading all your comments on his latest video, no doubt. But today, we're gonna start off by doing something really, really cool and playing with a piece of equipment that is actually really insane and super awesome for anyone in the Sylvia community, especially if you have a six-speed. It's a common misconception that the six-speed is weaker than the five-speed. In fact, there's a lot of pros to the six-speed over the five-speed, uh, and the six-speeds are generally stronger and last longer. Um, they may be a bit harder to find depending on what country you're in, but in Japan, we have what's called the Nismo six-speed transmission, which has first, second, and third gear that is completely different, way stronger. That's what I have in my car. That's why I haven't had any transmission issues or anything like that. And the biggest Achilles heel with the six-speed transmission on the Silvia is that you cannot get a short shifter for them, no matter what you do. Tons of short shifters or quick shifters, whatever you want to call them, for the five speed, but no one makes them for the six speed until now. Now, this, this video isn't sponsored whatsoever or anything like that. I really just love this company. I work with them a lot. Like they, they always send out anything that I need in the sense of shifters and stuff like that. And they released this new six speed Sylvia quick shifter or short shifter. And this thing is amazing. So let me show you. Today's video is sponsored by me. We've got booties back in stock, lads. Um, well, what's left of them? If you're not following me on Instagram and Twitter, well, you, you slept on it because this is all that's left of the new hoodies that we just restocked. Literally, I posted on Instagram and Twitter and we sold like pretty much all out. So if you are sleeping on that, then that's your own fault. Follow me on other socials. But we also do still have some beanies in stock and uh, what sizes are left of the hoodies, jump on that. Uh, we've got XLs, we've got three XLs and smalls left. We've got still some XL of the Ichigo Zoku shirts. Um, we've got the JZX shirts, these are all still in stock. Grab yourself a beanie, some of these, some of these. Um, you know, grab my worst selling shirt ever, the Yada shirt. Um, just support the brand, head to semit.net and grab yourself some merch and let's get back to today's video. This is a box that it came in and I love that they uh, they wrote their four Semit. And I don't think I've seen anyone draw an S like this since I was in school in like the year 2000, but super nostalgic and cool. Um, and the company that sent this is called Cube Speed. They make some incredible shifters. Here's their logo and their website. Make sure you go check them out. They make a bunch for all different types of cars. But let me break this down to you. We've got a billet bottom plate here. And this is one of the biggest reasons why no one makes these for the six speed, because you have to have all of this it's not just like the shifter only and you stick it in the OEM location. We do have a lot of transmissions lying around here that I'll be able to show you, but here's a six speed and you can see that with the six speed transmission, it has this entire piece here, which is what limits you to being able to just put a shifter like straight into that and use it because it's very difficult to work with that. As opposed to the five speed, now let's go over to the Mission Graveyard. You see the five speed is designed entirely different. Here's one. This is our mission transmission graveyard. So you can see the five speeds entirely different. And because of the way that this is designed, it's much easier just to have a shifter that slides straight in and uses the OEM um, hole there. All right. And as you can see, all the six speeds around here, there's another five speed there, completely different. So because of that, um, a lot of companies just, it was too difficult for them to make uh, a quick shifter or a, a short shifter, whatever you want to call it. Back to this work of art here, and this thing is incredible. I love billet pieces, and like this thing is just amazing. Well machined, you even got Cube's logo there, and this pretty much all comes out of the box pre-assembled like this. The only thing is you won't see the shaft attached, <laughs> shaft, and uh, this knob as well. <laughs> knob as well oh my gosh um that aside it comes uh, all pre-lubed in there uh, so it's all greased up you don't have to pull anything apart the, and it comes with a brand new delrin bushing there which will take some slop out of your old worn factory one that's for sure and of course it's going to feel incredible uh one thing to note as well is you will have to jack up the car or put it up on the lift so that you can get to those bolts on the top of the transmission it is going to be a bit of a pain uh, but the results will be worth it now i'm going to disassemble this so you guys can see how it comes out of the box and uh, the goodies here here, but pretty much as this comes in a kit is what you see now when it's together um, but we got to put this in the car so I got to disassemble this and here is how it comes in the box like I said just minus the shaft and the shift knob and this is how we're gonna put it in we will need to put some silicon sealant around this when we put it on top of the transmission uh, but otherwise we should be good initially we were planning to actually put this on Okachan's time attack car today but we realized 
he's got to race with this tomorrow and he's not going to be used to using a short shifter right off the bat and it's very important that he gets a very fast time tomorrow he's competing it's like an anniversary thing uh for uh, the fastest time he's ever done and tomorrow is like the day that he has to get the fastest time possible so what we're going to do is we're putting it in the lesson car for now and he's going to get used to it drift with it for a little bit and then we're going to put it in the time attack car so that then once he's kind of used to using the shifter and knows what to expect he can really work on shortening down the time that it takes him to shift those gears because i mean sure it may only bring down a couple milliseconds of shifting time but that is a huge difference when it comes to time attack and he's all about trying to get those times down as quick as possible so he can get over the line faster. So all these little things comp comp compound and give you a faster time around the track and trust me, it's worth it. Probably the next thing that we're going to be doing is putting the link in his car and working out flat shift, uh, flat, uh, flat shifting and all that kind of stuff. I think it's going to be really cool to see the results that that's going to give him because then he doesn't even need to take his foot off the accelerator. He's not going to lose boost, all that kind of stuff. It's going to be cool. Flat shifting is pretty epic. What is this guy up to? This <laughs> 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 Shogai Okachan forever. <laughs> oh, this guy's an absolute troll. I love it though, he just comes out and starts sticker bombing my car. Furiatsu on a kono sticker this year, ne? Furiatsu de show? Very old sticker. Shogai, Shogai wa forever. Forever Okachan. ちょっとラブラブですよね。ラブラブじゃねえ。ラブラブ。赤ちゃん forever. Shogai. There you guys go. I love this van even more now that he's put that on there. ね。ね。this is a very old sticker. Like, nan, nan gurai, nan gurai kana. Yeah. Yeah, 20 years ago this sticker. So there we go. We got a 20 year old Yashio factory sticker on there and a Forever Okachan sticker. So as you guys can see, we got the OEM shifter and like, I guess riser plate. I don't know what you'd call this. We got that out with the old shifter and we're gonna go have a look at the inside here and I'll show you what's going on. Very, very, very different design, the six speed than the five speed. Very interesting. So uh, as you can see, it's a paper, a kami, gasket um, and we're going to just put some sealant over that to prevent any leaks happening and then we'll slide the new one in pretty easy to get access to um, we did find it was easier for us to just loosen the bolts on the um, on the gearbox mount the like little uh, like member that comes across and holds the gearbox off we just loosened the bolts a little bit so it could sag down the transmission a tiny bit that just gave us a little bit extra room so that we could do what we needed to do so keep that in mind Getting some of that OEM Nissan gasket seal over everything. This stuff is brilliant. Last thing you want on a drift car or any kind of car is any type of uh, transmission fluid leaking out of the tranny. Because nine times out of ten, it leaks on top of the exhaust, creates a bunch of smoke, and can start a fire. We actually had to disassemble the shifter out of this um, so that we could line everything up and get this in first. Um, which is really easy. There's a total of eight uh, bolts that you undo, Allen keys. There's a four and a five. The five are the inner ones. And just be careful because it is spring-loaded, so just be wary for that. Um, but Utah's down down there now, tightening those two front ones, um, and then we'll slide this in. The best thing about this being able to come out as well is you can still feel your transmission from this point too. Um, and what we do in Japan is we don't generally, we always fill it from here on our Sylvias and RBs because you're able to get a little bit more in there than you usually would. Um, and that just helps the transmission stay cooler and a little bit more oil isn't gonna hurt anything, it's just gonna help if anything. So that's what we like to do here. Um, and now I should be able to line this bushing up and get it in there really easily. Once we get everything nice and tight, we'll do that. All right, so we just finished putting everything in and this thing from just sitting in the seat here and shifting it feels incredible. I think my favorite thing is one of the biggest things that you miss shift with in air chassis is that second to third. So check this out. I'm gonna push this up just with my thumb from second gear. 
it automatically places straight into third just from pushing up. So you're able to do that second to third just by pretty much just by pushing up straight straight away locate straight into third. That is incredible. And then down is so much easier to locate as well. So I think and it also feels like five and six are kind of harder to get into than any other gear. So the best thing about that is when you're drifting and stuff, or even in time attack, you rarely are using fifth and six. Um, you're literally using first, second, third, fourth. And sometimes another big thing that you'd misshift with is sometimes when you go to third with the stock shifter, you'd accidentally go into fifth and that'd screw up your entire run. If that happens in a competition, you're stuffed. It is very difficult to do that with this. You'll know if you're accidentally going into fifth because it feels way different. It's easier to go into third than fifth. But yeah, I'm really excited to try this out. Reverse kind of feels like it's a lot stiffer than OEM, so it's almost like a reverse lockout in a way because you could never accidentally go into reverse at all. But yeah, I'm really pumped about this. The cube speed knob shifter here as well is all locked in with the locking nut here. It's super nice. It feels good. You the door. Can feeling e just got. Nah. We're actually really excited to get a couple more of these and try them out in our cars. Um, and test them out for drifting at Nico because that second to third and third down to second gets you a lot So this I think is going to really help with that So shifter is installed I'm pretty excited for Okachan to get back and feel it out because it felt amazing We started up the engine and used the clutch and it actually shifted way easier into fifth and sixth and reverse than what it was When we were just sitting in the car trying it out Obviously, uh, I mean, that's a given once the engine's running and the transmission's spinning and oil's getting around and stuff like that It felt way different. So I'm pretty excited to see what this is going to be able to do. Like, you can shift so fast in that now. I think it's going to really help him out when we put it in the time attack car and he gets used to this. It's going to really feel different and shorten his times. And we're going to be able to document that too. So Okachan's gone to uh, the place where he gets his uh, aero and body kits made because uh, they're working on a new aero kit for time attack. And we're changing to brand new knuckles on the lesson car. These are way shorter and way more aggressive, the same ones that are on my car because um, these were the less aggressive ones that he had on there and you can see just how much longer this is here uh, they're not uh, uh, they're not like dropped and way short like this one is over here wait till... Uh, oh no, that still has the old one on it if we get over to here you'll see the new one which is the same on my car see it's been cut, dropped lower and way shorter there this one's already had the rack move forward too so it should feel really really good um, but yeah, Okachan said he's changing knuckles on this car and putting a better turbo on it, a new HK Step, uh, Step 3 turbo, GT3, um, because after he tried tandeming with me, after the changes we made to my car, he can't keep up with me at all. So he's like, all right, I'm changing knuckles and boosting up the lesson car so that we can do proper tandems and practice more together, because he knows how much I'm trying to focus on getting into FD and stuff, so he's really trying to make sure that this car is as equally matched to my car as possible so that we can continue to practice and do tandem uh, practice practice and whatnot. Um, that aside, um, I'm going to bring the K-Van in because uh, we're going for a big long drive tomorrow up to Ebisu Circuit and this thing's going to be sitting at literally like probably 4500 RPM the whole way up so hold like 120 Ks an hour and uh, I don't know what the condition of the inside of the engine of this is and I don't know what oil's in there when it was last changed or anything so we're going to do an oil change on this real quick Get some nice, thick, good quality oil in this. And um, that way we'll actually know what we're dealing with. And uh, with all the driving that we're going to be doing in the next few days, I think it's just a good idea to be safe rather than sorry. So, first time working on the K-Van, boys. It's literally like a day of being an apprentice here at Yashio Factory. Hope you're excited. You get to see a inside look of what's going on here. Just pulled the dipstick out of the K-Van and I'd say that this hasn't been changed in a while so glad we're doing this now. So I'm just under the K-Van right now looking at where to drain the oil from the oil pans over there so I gotta switch sides but this is where the oil filter is and they have this little protection like cage around it that you unbolt from it to get it out. A little bit of pain in the butt that you gotta unbolt two bolts there but that's a really smart move. Then there's a few other things on here there's even a hoop on the tail shaft, so like if that ever breaks or falls out, it catches it and stops it from failing, like flying, flying around and cutting stuff up. I guess it, it's to protect, like uh, to stop it from gashing into the fuel tank right there, right? It's really smart. And uh, obviously the tail shaft goes to the rear, to the solid rear axle there. You can see down there. And then you got the transfer case here. 
Same goes to my front wheels to here. Very cool design. I love this van. It's starting to it's starting to look like a four B. Every time, the more and more I look at it. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't afford a GTR, so I bought myself a KTR. I like that. All right, let's switch sides and uh, drain this oil out. Now the question is, is how much oil am I going to get on my fingers? Let's start a new challenge here, guys. No oil on fingers when uh, changing oil. Let's see. Are we going to get lucky? I've never done this before, so I don't know what kind of nut this uh, bolt this is. All right, three, two, one. Ha ha! Quick enough. It didn't get a single drop on me. That is some really black oil, though. Whew. Yeah, that's pretty gross. We're gonna let that drain into that. Glad we decided to do this today. Good call, boys. Good call. Finished doing the oil change on the van, and I just got it idling to bring it up to temperature before we drive home. But this is the oil that came out of it, guys. It is so black and disgusting. Um, let that be a lesson, guys. Always check when you get a car, do an oil change on it, just so you know where the car's at. I'm just glad no metal shavings came out in this thing because that would have really made me devastated. But probably got the best oil that this thing's ever had put in it right now. And uh, we'll just keep taking care of it. We'll do a transmission uh, ATF change soon too and probably a filter and stuff uh, and whatnot inside that. Get that done soon as well. And then this thing will probably last me for a very long time. Fingers crossed, hopefully. <laughs> So a fair bit of time has passed and I've been doing a ton of running around getting ready for tomorrow. It's kind of been insane, um, but we're heading to the shop right now. I'm gonna unload some stuff I'm bringing from the house to kind of just like get rid of stuff that doesn't need to be at the house that should be at the shop now, um, as well as load up some stuff from the shop like tools and basic things like that that I can use in case I need to work on the chaser or fix anything. You know, just stuff like being able to change tires and stuff like that as well. Um, because there's so much snow in certain places at the track right now at FBC that we can't get down uh, to where Fusto's little like shed and shop is to change tires. So it's gonna be a little bit hectic, but uh, I I'm just excited to see the place covered in snow and get some cool drone footage. So keep an eye out for that in the next few days. I'm just excited. Hopefully there's enough snow. I'm gonna bring my snowboarding gear. If there's enough snow, we're gonna get permission so that I can snowboard on the tracks and get towed around. I think it'll be funny as. Anyways, we'll see what happens, but uh, for now, let's get to the shop and load up. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about what's going on with the GoPad, and don't worry, I haven't, uh, I haven't trashed this thing. I just brought it to the shop today, and uh, we got some plans for this. I need to place an order from the states for a bunch of parts, but we're gonna motor swap this thing and make it like super crazy cool. It's gonna be awesome. But uh, the thing, like, it runs, it works fine. It's just there's a lot of parts on it that are breaking and old and I'm gonna order all the new parts to replace it. We're gonna put a bigger fuel tank on it. We're gonna do a motor swap. We're gonna make this thing stronger, better, and just a lot more fun. So I think it's gonna be a really cool thing to keep. And hopefully we'll have it ready for the next drift mid series because that'll be so much fun to rip around at Evisu Circuit on. Anyways, I'm just loading up everything in the van. Oh, there's boxes of parts and stuff that you can't see yet. <laughs> um, that uh, we're taking up for the chaser. Hopefully uh, that wasn't in the video, but if it is, Oh well. Anyways, um, I'm pretty much almost done. Finished packing stuff up and we're gonna head home. All right guys, just got home and I have so many things to get done before I can go to bed tonight because we're getting up super early in the morning at like 4.30 to head to Ebisu Circuit in the K-Van, which by the way, I am so excited about our first kind of like big trip in the K-Van because this is like the main thing why I wanted it for big, you know, going up to Ebisu Circuit, backups and forwards. It's got space for me to sleep in, throw a mattress and all that in there, all my tools, everything plus obviously the other bonus is a sh I needed a shop car I needed something I could fit bigger items in and stuff like that and I've used that thing so much in the last few days and filled it up with just stupid stuff like over and over it's insane so the car is definitely a win um, someone in the comment section gave me the idea of calling it the KTR actually like couldn't afford a GTR so we bought a KTR I mean it is all-wheel drive and turbo so similarities are there I think when we finally get around to wrapping the car, I'm gonna do a GTR logo, but we're gonna change it from a G to a K. I think it'll look really cool and kind of weird and funny, but anyways, guys, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. I need to get all these chores and things done so that we can leave bright and early in the morning and I can get some kind of sleep because driving like four to five hours on not much sleep is not good. Trust me, I know. So with that, guys, smash that like button, write us a comment, and subscribe, and head to the Semit.net shop to grab what uh, hoodies and beanies are left. They're probably sold out by now. I don't know. 
but uh, there's a very high chance they have. So don't forget, grab some other merch while you're there as well. Uh, tons of other stuff there. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace out. Jamata.